Hey, so wait till you hear this client story I have to share with you today and how it may relate really closely to you. And it was a new realization for me. I realized how this client of mine on InstaShred was getting so much recognition for what she was doing, although it was holding her back. Have you ever worked out so much and ate so well that people around you are like, wow, you eat really healthy. Dang, I wish I could go to the gym as much as you, but what you're doing isn't exactly getting you where you wanna go. You're just kind of putting in the work. You're guessing. You're going to the gym because you're assuming that's what's gonna get you to the next level, or you're eating the foods that are deemed so-called clean or healthy, but you don't actually know if they're getting you where you wanna go. But the recognition, the appreciation from other people giving you the compliment makes you feel like you should keep doing it. Listen to this story, and I hope it resonates with you because it was a huge realization for me. I was having a conversation with a client a little bit ago and she was talking about how when she was at her most fit, which she now is by the way, like 40 pounds heavier than she'd like and we're working on that. She said how everyone idolized the way she ate and now she realizes years later, no dude, it was an eating disorder. And it's so interesting how we see a lot of people that are fit, they look good, they seem healthy and we look up to the way they live or the things they do but a lot of times people go to extreme measures to get extreme results right if someone looks good you've got to wonder did they get there doing what they enjoy or did they deprive themselves heavily to where it actually hindered areas of their life that they could have enjoyed along the way right i'm all about working smarter not harder i like sustainability flexibility and working hard busting your rump but not more than you need to eating as much as possible while losing as much as possible Training as little as possible while getting as much as possible out of the gym. That's how it should be, right? Why work harder than we need to when we can put that time and energy elsewhere? What I realized in this is that a lot of people go through these trials and tribulations, we'll call it. The trials and tribulations we face are sometimes tainted by what other people perceive of us. And what I mean by this is when other people are congratulating us for, oh, you're eating so clean. Oh, you're training so hard. I don't know how you go to the gym seven days a week. I don't know how you're doing that much cardio. They almost make us feel good about what we're doing, even though we don't want to be doing it. But we've we've put ourselves on this pedestal of what people are looking up to and what they've aspired to be like. And if we're in good condition while doing these intense workouts seven days a week and eating clean, like a bird, some people eating 1200 calories. If you're eating 1200 calories and you're working out seven days a week, and let's say you're doing an hour of cardio a day and someone says to you, you're an inspiration. I love how fit you are. I want to look just like you. I want to do what you're doing. It encourages you to keep doing it even if you're so sick and tired of it and you're fed up with the way you're doing it when you get that recognition for the position you're in people don't realize that you beat yourself up to get there you're not enjoying it but people just see the end result and they're like oh I want to do it too I want to be just like that but in reality you're stuck in this cycle of trying to maintain this look so the take-home point is do it for yourself don't do it for the recognition and find a better way if the way you're doing it isn't the way you want to be doing it. Don't suffer longer than you need to when there may be an alternative route. You don't always have to bust your rump harder than you need to. I'm going to finish my lunch now. So it's my mini rant for the day. Flexibility, sustainability, and working smarter, not harder. Eat as much as possible to lose as much as possible and train as little as possible to get the most out of your training. Make sense? I hope so, because that's all I got for you. So the takeaway of that story was my client made so much progress doing what she was doing, but was still 40 pounds away from her ideal goal. And she kept doing the same thing she was doing, even though she hated it, because people were making her feel good about it. Gosh, you're so dedicated to the gym. Man, it's, it's amazing how well you eat, but she hated it. She despised the process she was going through, yet she didn't know any other way. And she kept doing it because it made other people feel good. She felt like an inspiration to others, even though behind the scenes, she really was not happy with how she was going about it or with the results she was getting. That's the worst part, is that she also wasn't getting what she wanted. She's still 40 pounds away from her goal. And to this day, she's actually lost 45 pounds. So she's five pounds under the goal weight she had, mind blown. It's been amazing to see her achieve what she ultimately wanted to achieve, but no one deserves to go through that turmoil. So if you're not enjoying the process and you're not getting where you wanna go, change it up. Don't rely on other people's recognition to create your own. Give yourself the enjoyable process of what it should be. You in the gym, eating the way you want, enjoying the flexibility and sustainability, a fitness lifestyle the way it should be. So I hope this brought some value to you as even as a coach for over 10 years in this industry, I learned a lot from that client conversation right there. See you next time.
And hey, if you're liking my content, even this video specifically, please give me a subscribe because I have so much more valuable fitness content in my arsenal to share with you to help you get where you're ultimately looking to go. Thanks.